What is going on everyone? In this video I will be explaining the best skills to inherit in Fire Emblem Engage. This guide will include the best skills obtainable from both the story emblems along with the DLC emblems. If you don't have the DLC, don't worry because the best skills in the game are largely found in the story units anyways. Make sure to keep in mind that this guide isn't going to cover any skill combos and is largely targeted towards players who are struggling on choosing a single best skill for their unit. This guide is going to cover the broad spectrum of the best overall skills that can be used on almost any unit and isn't locked down to any specific type or class of unit. Also, these skills are objectively some of the best skills in the game, and if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know of any broken skill combos that you have found in your playthrough. A unit is able to inherit skills from an emblem after reaching bond level 5 with that emblem. Some skills can only be obtained after completing an emblem's paralogue story. You can speed up the bonding process with an emblem by going to the arena and training with that emblem to whatever level you want your bond to become. You can now also inherit skills from emblems in the arena, which is a major improvement from having to take time to travel to the ring room to inherit the skills. Since SP is very difficult to accumulate, it is important to choose the correct skills for your unit. Considering we just got the Ancient Well added to the base game, we can see anywhere from 8,000 to 16,000 bonus SP in a single playthrough using only the basic 2-3 to three star rewards found by depositing a single iron weapon or 5 iron weapons. Meaning with a team of 14 units, you can see an extra 500 to 1,000 extra SP per unit, which is huge. This extra SP allows for some extra variety when choosing what skills to inherit and allows you to choose more expensive skills like holdout and speed tank without worrying about wasting SP on skills you may not need. SP can be gained through battles, and originally a unit would need to be holding an emblem ring to gain SP equal to however much experience they gain, but with the addition of Emblem Veronica, players can now inherit a skill called SP Conversion that grants an additional 20 SP per kill to the unit with the skill. With this skill, there are many possibilities for gaining a near infinite amount of SP for a unit, as the skill activates even when used on reinforcements. Although this SP farming method is only available to those with the DLC, there there's still a large amount of SP that can be found in a playthrough in the base game. Some of the best skills for early game are the skills that increase the base stats of a unit, like speed plus 1 to speed plus 5. As these base stat increases allow your unit to go from getting doubled by a unit to doubling on that unit. Once mid game hits however, these stat increases are not as noticeable and are overtaken by some of the other skills in the game. Like instead of paying 2000 SP for speed plus 5, you could instead pay 2000 SP for speed taker, which increases your speed to a plus 10 in increments of 2 after each kill obtained, so you'll have a speed increase to plus 10 instead of a speed increase to plus 5, so you're getting double your value in speed taker. Also just so you know, the skills that have upgraded versions of themselves are able to be bought with a discounted SP cost later on, as you are paying your way to getting the maxed version of the skill in increments. So if you are trying to buy the speed plus 5 and don't have 2000 SP at the moment, you can buy speed plus 4 for 1000 SP, and the SP cost for speed plus 5 will be reduced to 1000 SP. And with that, let's talk about the skills. Starting off, we have Divine Pulse, a 250 SP skill found on Byleth at bond level 1. Divine Pulse may turn a missed attack into a hit, with the trigger being 30%, with an increased chance depending on the unit's luck stat. This skill has saved my unit's life on numerous occasions, when the foe is standing on avo boosting terrain and my unit's hit rate is low. Next is one of my favorite skills, Draconic Hex. Draconic Hex is an inheritable skill from Corinth for 2000 SP at bond level 8. If a unit initiates combat, the unit inflicts minus 4 to all of the foe's basic stats after combat, with the penalty shrinking by minus one each turn. Combined with a Wolf Knight's hobble skills, this skill becomes a deadly stat debuff to any enemy in all stages of the game. I have used this skill since it became unlocked and I can safely say it is very helpful when facing boss units. Alacrity is a 1000 SP skill and is one of the best skills for its cost. Alacrity is found on bond level 1 Lin and allows a unit with a speed advantage to follow up before the unit can counterattack. Putting this skill on a fast unit or one with speed taker makes the unit a force to be reckoned with. I put this skill on Alchrist and he went from being a mediocre filler unit to being in my top three units for my playthrough. He is able to take out any unit in the game without receiving counterattack damage provided he has the correct bow. Next up is a skill I wish I inherited before chapter 10 events played out. Marth's Perceptive is a level 1 skill for 250 SP and if the unit initiates combat it grants plus 15 avo during combat. Avo is a very important stat for all units in Fire Emblem especially with increased difficulty modes like Maddening. A high avo can be the difference between life and death for your unit so having a 15 increase to this stat is a boon that should be immediately inherited on your favorite units. Another skill I wish I inherited is Marth's Unyielding, which is a 100 SP skill at level 7 that says at the start of player phase, if unit's HP is 20% or less, restore 20% of the unit's maximum HP. This skill is an amazing standalone skill for every single unit, being only 100 SP and greatly increases the survivability of all your units. This skill offers healing to units when they really need it without wasting a staff charge and along with any tank unit being nearly impossible to kill with Unyielding. This skill is a must-have 
have for mid to late game, and combos very well with multiple different skills, like Holdout and Wrath. Sigurd's Canter is on this list because not only does Canter provide amazing mobility for your units, it is accessible right away in the beginning of the game and is available at Sigurd's Bond level 1. Although 1000 SP for Canter is relatively steep considering the Ancient Well unlocks in Chapter 7, make sure to inherit at least Canter on the units you are planning on playing throughout the majority of the game. I put Canter on a Leer before Chapter 10, and the benefits of having the extra two spaces of movement after combat was very helpful for setting up my next attack phase. Alir was also one of my most mobile units during the beginning portions of the game. Roy's Advance is a useful skill for only 500 SP at Bond level 3. Advance is a lifesaver for sword and axe wielding classes as they typically suffer from decreased movement. Being able to have the ability to take an extra step towards an enemy gives the unit increased mobility during combat that improves their combat capabilities by allowing them access to more enemy units, which helps thin out the battlefield, especially during combat phases where there is a high amount of enemies targeting your units. Next up is Lucina's Dual Assist. This 1000 SP skill is accessible at bond level 3 and says that if a unit is able to chain attack when allies attack foes, unit could reach by moving, with the trigger being 35%. This skill is considerably good for classes like the Wolf Knight or other high mobility classes because they gain the ability to chain attack foes up to 7 spaces away. But since this skill is only useful on backups, it's not as good as other skills in this guide. Now we have Corrin's Pair Up. It's a 2000 SP skill accessible at bond level 13 and grants the unit immunity to all chain attacks. This skill is most definitely worth the 2000 SP because in late game when chain attacking foes deal an upwards of 7 damage per hit, this skill becomes perfect for frontline units so you don't have to worry about any cheap shots from the opposing backup units taking out your favorite unit. Lin's Speed Taker is another one of my favorite skills. It's a 2000 SP skill available at bond level 3. Speed Taker gives the unit plus 2 speed when it attacks and defeats an enemy unit in the same turn. The speed boost stacks to a max of plus 10 and stays throughout the entire scenario. This skill quickly overtakes Lin's speed increase stats as those only go to plus 5 and are worth the same SP cost. Speed Taker is easily activated especially in maddening mode where there is an increased amount of enemy units and when you have units that can one shot enemies due to high crit or high damage output. This makes Speed Taker a viable option for them. Now for the last of the story emblems, we have Roy's Holdout. It's a skill I inherited after I experienced fighting Roy in his paralogue. Holdout is a 2000 SP skill that allows the unit to survive with 1 HP if before combat they have 30% or more HP. Holdout also can be upgraded to the 5000 SP version that allows a unit to survive with 1 HP if they had 2 HP before combat. Holdout is by far one of the top skills in the game as it can be comboed with Ike's Wrath or Marth's Unyielding. Putting Holdout on a tank or a unit like Diamond who has access to soul makes them nearly unkillable as they will almost always be above 30% health. Holdout is a must have for any of your tankier units. These next skills are exclusive to the DLC emblems. Starting off we have Hector's Adaptability. Any stat increases for defense and resistance are much needed for frontline units like Diamond. Adaptability activates after being hit with a physical or magical attack and provides the unit with a plus two to either defense or resist depending on the damage type. Adaptability is a safe bet at improving your unit's survivability. A must have skill for any mage unit is Soren's Anima Focus for 800 SP. Anima Focus adds additional effects to spells based on their element type with defense minus three for fire, hit minus 20 for thunder, or move minus two for wind magic, and the effects last one turn. These added effects help soften up tankier units that you wouldn't have been able to safely attack previously. With Anima Focus on the cheaper side of inheritable skills, it is a must grab to increase your mage unit's utility. Up next is Veronica's Book of Worlds. Book of Worlds is a cheap 300 SP skill that activates when the unit selects weight on their turn. After each consecutive use of weight, Book of Worlds advances one stage to a max of five stages and then reverts to base stage if user triggers the effects. Book 1 freezes foes after unit initiates combat. Book 2 sets foes space on fire after combat. Book 3 deals 10 true damage after combat. Book 4 restores HP equal to damage dealt during combat. Book 5 restores health to adjacent allies equal to damage dealt after combat. At all stages, the user needs to initiate combat for the effects to take place, and any previous stage books will also take effect. This skill is a good skill regardless of unit type or class because it weaponizes the wait button to being able to set up devastating effects in the coming turns. Hector's Heavy Attack is the best use for whatever weapon you gave Ike's Engrave to. Ike's Engrave 
Grave increases a weapon weight far beyond any unit's build, which is exactly what Heavy Attack is looking for. Heavy Attack adds excess weapon weight as damage to a max of plus 5. Putting this on a base sword increases damage output by about 50% and turns the unit into a close combat monster. Soren's Assigned Decoy is a 1500 SP skill that makes up to 3 enemy units target the selected unit. This skill is the best skill for a support unit in Maddening, as it makes enemy units target units that have 0% hit rate. From my own experience, having 3 enemies being forced to target my Wolf Knight Lapis or Silver Dagger Yunaka in Fog with 0% hit rate meant I could rest easy knowing none of my units would die during that round of combat. Next we have Edelgard's Lineage, which is pretty self-explanatory. For 150 SP, you add a 1.2 multiplier to units XP gain. Put this on all your units because it's such a cheap experience boost, and in Maddening where experience gain is minimal, this helps out a ton. Tiki's Star Sphere is much more expensive than Lineage at 2000 SP, but is much better as it increases stat increase chances upon level up. I have this on a lot of my units, and as I am reaching late game, I'm noticing more and more of them reaching the stat cap on some of their stats. This skill stacks with Jean's personal skill, making him a stat gaining machine. Extra stats for any unit is a plus, so make sure Star Sphere is on your priority list of skills to inherit. Along with Star Sphere and Lineage, we have SP Conversion for 300 SP. This skill is easily the best skill in the game as it allows you to farm for infinite SP on a unit, which correlates to any skills you want on your unit. This skill is a game changer because it allows for more combinations of expensive skills that wouldn't have been possible with the previously limited pool of SP. Make sure to inherit this skill as fast as possible to reap the benefits of increased SP gain. Finally, we have Krom and Robin's Rally Spectrum for 1500 SP. This skill boosts all adjacent allies 7 basic stats by plus 3 and helps out in so many situations because it is so versatile. Only having 1 or 2 stats boosted by plus 3 is considered a big help, so by having a plus 3 to all of the basic stats means that the unit is essentially leveling up 2 or 3 times in one turn with an increased stat distribution. This skill is a bit pricey and is best to have on a support unit. There are a lot of other skills that are really good as well, like Favorite Food and Wrath that you can play around with, along with a ton of different combos you can try with inheritable skills that can turn any unit into a powerhouse unit. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe and keep an eye out for more Fire Emblem videos in the future.